Welcome to Cataract Pieces. It's a video series that I produced, uh, and this one's called Resident Series 101, Sculpting a Groove. There's a lot of information in a short amount of time, so you may want to watch it several times or before surgery. This is going to start with a chalk talk. When I'm sculpting a groove for cataract surgery, we have a bird's eye view, but it's really important to consider the side view of the cataract that you're um, working on. So this is a cartoon and you can see the deepest section is in the middle. The orange triangles on the side are demonstrating that there's angles where the posterior sections slope up. And we're trying to sculpt in the deepest area represented by this blue cylinder. So if we do a thought experiment on this cartoon, this is a blue capsulotomy. The red represents the entrance wound of the cornea uh, incision and you'll notice if you're two millimeters in on your cornea incision length uh, and you're at this height that I like to think of the lens in three pieces so I call it the rule of thirds the proximal middle and distal third and if you stick an instrument in it's going to be very difficult to access certain areas proximal I'm demonstrating here the steep slope of the posterior angle you want to avoid and this yellow block is where you'd hope to sculpt because it's the deepest and safest area. This red line represents a phaco tip, but as you come through in this thought experiment through your entrance wound and the edge of your capsulotomy, which is in blue, you really can't access the proximal third very well. So you think you're proximal, but you're not. And any angulation of that tip is already taking you beyond halfway in the lens and heading towards the upslope of the distal third that's your most dangerous area. So even the steepest angle as I'm showing here really is getting into the deepest part of the lens and it's best to couple that. The goal of this thought experiment was to get you to think about the lens from the side view and the angle of the posterior capsule while you're sculpting. So I like to break the sculpting part of the cataract surgery into a rule of thirds and think of the lens as a three-dimensional object that I'm sculpting. So I break it into the proximal, middle, and distal thirds depending on the location of the corneal incision and each third requires a different angle of the phaco tip because of the posterior capsule curvature. The more sculpting of the proximal groove will allow for the safest tip angle as shown in our thought experiment. So now let's apply the rule of thirds focusing on the proximal section of the groove into the lens during cataract surgery. I go to the edge of the proximal capsulotomy edge, being careful not to rip it with the phaco needle, and I angle as steep as possible, 80 to 90 degrees. This is one of the more critical steps of creating a groove because it's the deepest area of the lens, and it'll really set the stage for the rest of your groove and set you up for cracking as well. This area also has a good red reflex, so you have good depth visualization while you're trying to sculpt the proximal area. Once you get to the middle third, this is again the deepest area of the cataract, but I start to flatten my tip out if I did a good job sculpting proximal. In a very dense lens, there's a technique using the flat tip in an ice scraper-like technique I'll review later. I use the most caution in sculpting the distal third as I'm concerned, I'll burst through and break the capsular bag. The lens becomes less dense in this area, and the posterior lens curves upward as well. So I'm really only trying to remove about 50% of the superficial area, just so I can best visualize when I go to crack. I'm always looking for clues as to the depth of a lens, and during hydrodissection with a good red reflex, you can see here as fluid wave comes posterior, a lot of times you can get a sense of how deep you'll need the groove. Next talk about action steps to create the groove. Step one is to remove just a superficial fluff on aspiration only. There really shouldn't be any ultrasound used during this step. You don't need the top 15% because you're not going to use it to help you crack later as well. This step will help you improve your red reflex and visualization during the groove steps. This demonstrates removal of the superficial cortical material so I can get better visualization for the groove. 
The second step is to then begin at the edge of the proximal capsulotomy. So while you're making your capsulotomy, take a visual note of where that location is. And then you want to angle steep because this is the most critical part, is the proximal third debulking. You'll notice that I'm focused just on the proximal half of this lens to demonstrate this. And you can see that I'm at the edge of the capsule and going deep into the lens, into the deepest area of the cataract. Third step is to then approach the middle and distal third of the lens, staying flat in the middle section and then curving upwards and superficial in the distal third. This is the same groove being created, but now the camera is focused on the middle and distal third. You can see the groove is being created with the FACO tip mostly flat in a safe position. The fourth step is then to crack within your groove. You need to be as deep as possible in the groove to have firm material and easily separate. So really work to get those instruments deep into the groove. The next consideration is to, when you crack, to have not in the middle of your groove, it's harder to separate those big halves and there's more stress on the bag, but rather go to the distal third of the groove and this will let you have better visualization of your instruments and then you can also visualize your crack a little easier. Also notice as you're separating at this area, you're more twisting the two halves so there's less stress on the bag as well. Then you want to start to unzip from the initial crack. So you'll see the initial crack is in the distal third, but then I'll march along my groove to extend this crack to create two halves. I find this is easier to visualize and a little easier on the bag as well. So let's look at a few cases to put all these steps into action. You'll see that I have located the proximal edge of my capsulotomy. I'm using the FACO uh, needle tip to really kind of sculpt deep in this proximal third area, angling deep. And by debulking that area, it allows me to flatten into the middle area in a safer way with my FACO tip as I create the groove. Also notice I'm becoming more superficial in the distal third. Once the groove is created, a second instrument is placed. By cracking at the distal third, it's a good angle for your instruments to also uh, be able to pull or push. You'll see I miss here. I wasn't deep enough, but with good visualization, I can then readjust and get that crack going and then unzip from the distal third to the proximal area. This is another example of creating a groove using sculpting. Uh, I'm removing the superficial fluff to improve my visualization and allow for better red reflex. And you'll see that I'm focusing on a steep angle in the proximal third right from the edge of my capsulotomy. By debulking this proximal third, it's going to allow me to more safely approach the middle and distal thirds of my groove in keeping the FACO tip more flat. I'm always afraid of the distal third knowing the posterior capsule is curved up and you'll see I'm very gently trying to remove about the top 50% of this lens. At this point I've debulked proximal. I'm using the tip to really get a little deeper in the middle third but I'm keeping the tip as flat as possible during this section of the groove. I'm even sculpting a little more proximal at that point to just get a better approach to the middle. Now placing the second instrument, I'll go to the distal third, deep into the groove, and creating a crack, and then unzipping it from there. Given the density of this lens, I decided to use a divide and conquer technique. So I rotated 90 degrees. It's tempting to want to go into the distal half, 
but once again, I'm sculpting proximal into the proximal half, knowing I really want to only crack the distal half. But by creating this space, my instrument can flat fit in better, and I can enter that distal half with a flat tip and sculpt in a safe manner using a lot of the principles that I apply in the steps for the initial groove. Then I place the instruments deep into the groove and I'm able to crack. I next want to discuss some peripheral considerations while you're doing sculpt during cataract surgery. The first is to really understand your FACO machine and really take control of what the settings mean and the implications while you step on the pedal. I'd like to take a quick deeper dive into the settings I use on the Alcon Centurion machine. Understanding the details of your FACO settings is critical. This is a picture of the sculpt mode on the machine. It's very low vacuum but high aspiration and there's different settings of how to build your FACO this is a picture zoomed in on the torsional component, and that diagonal line shows as I'm in position, position two on the foot pedal, it increases the amount of FACO energy delivered. This next picture is demonstrating how you can change your settings. This is aspiration flow between foot position two and three, and you can see you can manipulate how the aspiration will build and how it will flatten out. I have spent hours meeting with the company equipment representatives to understand how these settings can be manipulated and benefit me during the sculpt part of cataract surgery. I also set the foot pedal so that range 2 to 3 has the greatest percentage because this is where I'm working during the sculpt mode to control how much FACO energy is delivered and the level of aspiration. So I am using the knowledge of my FACO settings and my foot position during sculpt just like I'm visualizing the 3D version of the lens during creation of the groove in cataract surgery. A lot of times during cataract surgery you need to sculpt deeper to be able to crack. So this is a technique called the power move where I have my middle third sculpting occurring and I want to keep my tip as flat as possible but I'll actually engage the needle of the FACO tip and lift it up to scrape. Kind of like if you're trying to scrape ice off of a sidewalk, you can see here the tool can't go through the sidewalk just like you can't go through the posterior capsule. So again, I'm flat with my FACO tip, but I'm pushing with the needle, almost lifting up at times and applying just enough FACO energy to emulsify a millimeter deeper. Here's one last example just to bring all the concepts together. You can see that we start the case uh, removing the anterior fluff to improve our visualization. I'm picturing a 3D version of this lens knowing where the posterior curvature uh, is and they're uh, taking advantage of the proximal sculpt. While I step down on the pedal, I'm knowledgeable about my aspiration and phaco settings and where I am in the foot position so I can have total control as I'm trying to sculpt this lens. You can see as I enter the middle third, I'm flattening the tip, and as I enter the distal third, I'm sculpting up. At this point, I'm introducing the second instrument, cracking at the distal third. This allows for good vector forces by the instrument placement to go deep and not much pressure on the bag and I'm unzipping the initial crack as I march more proximal. One last pearl is to take a moment and pause when you do crack the plate to take a look at the thickness. This will give you feedback to how thick or thin you did sculpt and then also allows you to know while you're trying to pull pieces out of the bag if there's a thick plate it might be more difficult to remove the pieces. This also will serve as a great segue into our next video, which will deal more with nuclear piece removal. I hope you found this section useful. This is Scott Laborowitz saying goodbye from Cataract Pieces.